beneath the towering mountain of Shindere Peak, there lies the city of Karnaka. It has been called the Jewel of the South at the edge of the world, and this title is justified. For any traveler who journeys outwards from its opulent ports will find only the endless oceans that surround the Empire of the Isles. Yet while Karnaka might be a jewel at the edge of the world, it is a jewel nevertheless, and the city's exotic climate, its veins of raw silver, and the purported supernatural elements that haunt its streets and shadows have enticed people from all across the empire. Karnaka is both the capital and the largest city on the southernmost island province of Sakonis. Who first founded the city is unknown, but several historic waves of immigration brought settlers from all across the isles. The city's first major expansion came as a result of the 1803 Morley Famine, which saw a mass wave of immigration into the city. The discovery of great pockets of silver within the neighboring Shindari Peak brought the first true wealth to Karnaka and encouraged further immigration into the city. Now home to an eager and ever-growing workforce, wealthy trade companies from the national capital of Dunwall financed a great restructuring of the city proper, building the wide avenues, great ports, and verdant gardens for which the city is now famous. Their greatest contribution to Karnaka, however, was the Grand Sirkonen Canal, which passed through the city to split the entire island in two, creating a direct link to Dunwall. Karnaka appealed not only to the poor and desperate working class, but also to the nobility and elite of the empire. It was said that a month spent resting beneath the sun of the beaches of Sirkonis could cure most maladies and it became a favored tourist destination to those who could afford it. The arrival of the aristocracy brought further wealth to the city, but also the arts, museums, and other displays of high culture. The Royal Conservatory of Karnaka drew acclaim from across the empire for its collection of stuffed and mechanized fauna, its showcase of the local mining industry, and the exhibition on the discovery of whale oil's industrial potential. The Adamaya Institute, likewise, was once a luxurious solarium, and now one of the finest centers for research into infectious diseases within the empire. The continued modernization of the city has seen the exploitation of the unnatural winds caused by Shinderi Peak. This wind corridor powers hundreds of turbines, which are in turn critical to maintain the infrastructure and industry of the city. As a result, the city enjoys a more steady flow of power compared to those which use the more ubiquitous whale oil. However, the harsh winds that flow through the streets can at times become dangerous, and many buildings have been designed to serve as windbreakers. Combined with the hazy plumes of silver dust that rise over the mines, certain ailments have arisen across the city, and the Batista Mining District has become better known as the Dust District. The presence of these sickly ghettos in the shadow of opulent courts and palaces underscores the tremendous stratification of Karnakan society. Recently, however, an explosion in the local population of bloodflies, vicious, parasitic insects, has caused a degree of social upheaval. The spread of disease has plagued both the nobility and common folk alike, with many nobles forced to take to the streets selling contraband wares to fund prohibitively expensive treatments. The local government has refused to grant this problem the title of epidemic, however, referring to it instead as only the bloodfly concern. To control this growing outbreak, the Grand Sakonan Guard and the overseers of the Abbey have increased their presence across the city. Watchtowers, walls of light, and arc pylons have been constructed across the city restricting the movement of its citizens. On-the-spot executions have also been reported, and Karnaka is beginning to resemble Dunwall at the height of its own rat plague. Many consider these recent disturbances to be somehow linked to Shinderi Peak. According to the banned literature of certain cults, the mountain is unique across the whole of the empire as a place where the world and the afterlife, the so-called void, are closest to one another. If this is true, 
then Karnaka might not have been built solely on the wealth of silver, or the power of wind, but on the call of the supernatural. In the Atlas, the Templin Institute investigates the most storied places from across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 